It is well known uh, from uh, the time of Einstein that uh, light uh, travels in the uh, free space with an amazingly fast speed. Uh, however, it turns out that when the uh, light interacts with matter, uh, it is possible to dramatically slow uh, its speed down and ac actually also even bring it to a complete standstill. The idea uh, is that um, uh, whenever uh, a light enters uh, the material medium, the photons are no longer free to basically propagate uh, as in a free space. So in fact, what they have to do is they have to kind of hop from atom to atom. And as a result, these uh, uh, coupled waves of the photons and the uh, uh, kind of polarization, as scientists say, of the um, uh, polarization wave in the atomic medium, they propagate together. And the combined uh, wave can have the uh, velocity which is much smaller than the speed of light in vacuum. In such a case, uh, we have showed uh, about 12 years ago that you can actually bring the, such uh, kind of combined atomic uh, uh, light wave to complete standstill by just manipulating uh, the wave as it propagates inside uh, the specially prepared atomic medium. So this uh, uh, might sound like a curious scientific observation, but at the same time it turns out that such a, um, uh, such a system can be an extremely useful tool uh, for manipulating light and uh, creating uh, new uh, types of uh, networks uh, with uh, unique uh, uh, properties. Uh, specifically, in a modern uh, society, uh, light waves are used for communicating information. And the reason why uh, light is such a good carrier is because it's very fast and also it can propagate for very long distances without being disturbed. What our work showed uh, is that by just slowing down and stopping the light pulse, we can effectively uh, map the information which is carried by light into a certain state of the material medium. So while in matter this information can be uh, stored for some period of time and then later retrieved or perhaps manipulated in some uh, special way. And the key is that this can be done uh, uh, completely quantum me mechanically uh, at the level all the way down to the level of individual photons. So uh, this um, uh, opens up the possibility uh, to extending the conventional uh, uh, internet to the domain involving communication of uh, quantum information uh, or communication of quantum states. The reason why this is special is because uh, it uh, 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 might allow for some new capabilities, for example, for uh, completely secure ways to transmit the information by encoding the information in a single a photon, you can ensure that this information, if transmitted, uh, will be completely undisturbed. In other words, no one could have ever possibly listened to this uh, specific information channel uh, without being undetected. Moreover, uh, this kind of quantum networks uh, may someday enable distributed quantum comp uh, uh, computation, much in a way like conventional optical fiber networks are used now to make classical computers uh, work in unison. Another important direction which uh, uh, 
is being explored by us and others uh, involves um, making use of this kind of slow photons to create uh, strong interaction, strong coupling between individual light, light quanta. I guess uh, uh, many uh, uh, of you uh, remember the science fiction movies where, you know, uh, like uh, some heroes are trying to use lightsabers to basically deflect each other's kind of light beam. So, of course, in practice, in a kind of conventional world, in conventional materials, such uh, 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 things are impossible. Two light beams penetrate through each other without interactions uh, entirely. However, in the slow light medium, it is possible to create the conditions such that a indiv single individual photon will actually affect uh, the photon from another beam and the interactions are mediated by the matter. And this, uh, for example, um, allowed us recently to implement uh, uh, a quantum mechanical switch where basically one photon can turn the switch on and off and then subsequently regulate the transmission of the uh, subsequent uh, light beam. This uh, type of uh, a single photon switch or single photon transistor uh, might be an important element of uh, this kind of quantum networks because it allows us, us to process the quantum information carried by the light waves on one hand, but it also might uh, kind of in the near term um, allow for new uh, advances uh, in the classical uh, uh, in, in a world of classical computers. So one of the uh, big challenges um, uh, which uh, currently the classical com uh, computer net, you know, networks or computer chips are facing, facing is an excessive heat dissipation uh, due to just electrical resistance. Uh, by using uh, photons to communicate quantum information, even locally on the chip, one can potentially circumvent this, uh, this challenge uh, but of course, since the photons don't interact, whenever you want to process information, even classical, you have to convert electrical signal into light uh, signals and, and vice versa. By using uh, these ideas of uh, interacting photons, one might potentially uh, also uh, enable uh, light-based information processing uh, and this can be helpful both in the classical and in the quantum domain. So the, the fundamentally the idea of uh, slowing and stopping light involves essentially uh, the use of atoms to absorb the incoming uh, photons. But of course conventionally if you shine light for example into the black wall, right, then this wall would absorb the photons. However, you know, this will be of no use. So the type of absorption which we're exploring for this slow and stopped light experiment is a special kind of coherent quantum mechanical absorption. So we make the atoms absorb the photons in such a way that the atoms preserve the state, the quantum state which is carried by the light uh, pulse. And this is done uh, uh, by um, essentially massaging, the pre by preparing or massaging the medium uh, the, the optical medium with an, an additional light pulses to really make them uh, to, to make uh, them essentially grab the quantum states, extract the quantum states uh, carried by light and then store them in the atomic uh, sublevels which live for a long time you know and these atomic sublevels provide the means to basically have a quantum memory and you know provide also a means to enable photons eventually to interact uh, in a coherent way. So what uh, uh, we would like to do now is to uh, uh, improve the lifetime of our memory, imp improve the, the time for which the stored photons uh, can be preserved in our atomic medium. We would like to improve the efficiency with which the photons 
can be converted into atomic waves and vice versa. We would like to uh, increase the strength of interactions between the atomic waves to make the interactions uh, between uh, photons faster and more reliable. And finally, what we would like to do is we would like to miniaturize this kind of uh, devices uh, with the view of eventual integration uh, or, uh, of these devices maybe all the way down to the computer chips. So basically, we're exploring the possibility of uh, using um, light matter interaction uh, in a nanoscale uh, systems and nanoscale waveguides and cavities in order to both uh, increase the strength of the interactions, but also to miniaturize this system. So on the theoretical level, I would say one of the uh, most uh, intriguing questions is, you know, once we build such a quantum network, once we can really reliably, you know, store these photons, you know, retrieve these photons, exchange these photons between the nodes of this network, the question is, what can you do with this network? So I mentioned already that there is one application would be for secure quantum communication, but potentially these networks can do a lot more. So for example, one could um, imagine that you know, if combined with, uh, uh, with the capability of uh, quantum uh, systems to sense external perturbations, such a network uh, could enable some kind of distributed quantum computation in a way which could resemble uh, something like a quantum artificial intelligence. These things at the moment are in a very kind of preliminary speculative stage, but nevertheless, uh, I think these ideas are extremely intriguing and their potential is completely not understood. So I'm looking forward to new developments in this area for these reasons. <laughs>